The sight of the nun with decaying skin and haunting, hollow eyes would forever be etched into my memory. I didn't believe in demons, ghosts, or anything paranormal before this encounter, but now, now, I wish I'd never been so ignorant. It began with a dare, of course. My friends and I were celebrating Halloween weekend, as college students do, by testing our limits. We'd heard rumors of an abandoned convent at the edge of town. No one went there anymore, not since it was closed down after reports of strange occurrences decades ago. Nuns, they said, had gone mad, locked inside by their own choice, claiming to hear voices from the walls. Some of the townsfolk spoke of a demonic presence that had taken over the convent, driving them insane. One by one, they had either disappeared or died, leaving behind only horror stories. Naturally, it became the perfect place for us to go ghost hunting. The night was cold, a biting chill to the air that warned us to stay away. But we didn't listen. We were invincible, at least in our minds. The convent loomed before us, a massive stone building now overgrown with ivy and disrepair. The windows were black, shattered, and lifeless, much like the stories of those who once lived inside. Yet, we entered, eager to record whatever supernatural activity we could. The inside was no better, dusty pews, overturned furniture, and a thick layer of filth covered everything. Candles, long since burned out, lined the walls. It felt as though time had stopped, as though the walls themselves were suffocating under the weight of years of neglect. But that wasn't what unsettled us the most. It was the silence. Not a single sound could be heard beyond our footsteps and the occasional nervous chuckle. We split up, like fools in horror movies do, thinking we'd cover more ground. I ventured into the lower levels, into the chapel's catacombs. The smell was what first hit me, a rancid odor of rot and decay that seemed far too fresh for a place left abandoned for so long. Every step echoed ominously, the air getting colder the deeper I went. There was an altar ahead, cracked and crumbling, but something was wrong. I felt watched, as if a thousand eyes were on me. I glanced around, seeing nothing but shadows, until my flashlight flickered. And there, just a glimpse, I saw a figure, standing motionless in the far corner. It was a nun. Or at least, it was dressed like one. Her habit was torn, dirty, and as my flashlight stuttered, I caught a glimpse of her face. Pale, like a corpse, her eyes were black voids that seemed to suck the light away. I froze, my body refusing to move as my brain screamed to run. The nun smiled, a smile that stretched too wide, her mouth parting to reveal rows of sharpened teeth. And her tongue, it was long, snake-like, dripping with some dark, slimy substance. I blinked, and she was gone. I turned to flee, running blindly through the catacombs. My legs felt heavy as though something unseen was dragging me back. The corridors twisted and turned in ways I didn't remember. The sound of whispers began to grow louder, rising into a cacophony of voices, some pleading, some laughing, others crying out in agony. I burst into what I thought was the exit, but instead found myself in a circular chamber with tall, decayed statues of saints surrounding the room. But these saints were different, each had a face twisted in torment, their hands bound by chains of rusted iron. In the center of the room stood the same nun, now facing me fully. Her black eyes were locked onto mine, and her mouth stretched wider than before, the tongue hanging out obscenely. She began to move toward me, but not with steps, she floated, her feet never touching the ground. The air around her rippled, the temperature plummeting with each inch she drew closer. My flashlight flickered out. In the pitch black, her raspy voice slithered into my ears. We are many, she whispered. We are bound here, forever. Suddenly, there were more of them, more nuns emerging from the darkness, each with rotting skin and twisted features. They surrounded me, their cold breath on my neck, their hands brushing my arms as they whispered in a language I couldn't understand. I stumbled backward, tripping over a fallen piece of stone. The nuns closed in, their bony hands stretching toward me, and then, out of nowhere, a bell tolled. 
The sound echoed through the chamber, and the nuns froze. For a moment, I thought I was saved, that the bell signaled an end to whatever horror was unfolding. But as the bell tolled again, their smiles returned, more malicious than before. I scrambled to my feet, heart pounding, and darted toward the only door I could see. The nuns' laughter echoed behind me as I sprinted down the corridor, unsure of where I was going, only knowing that I needed to escape. The walls seemed to pulse, breathing in and out, almost alive. I found the stairs and took them two at a time, gasping for breath, my body screaming for release from the terror. But I could still hear them, the nuns, their footsteps growing closer, their whispers louder. When I finally reached the top, I burst out into the chapel, where my friends were. They looked at me, confused, asking why I was so pale, what had happened. I tried to tell them, but my words stumbled out incoherently. The darkness, the nuns, the eyes, the voices, it all jumbled together. Then I saw her again. Standing at the far end of the chapel, watching me. The others didn't see her, though, no matter how much I pointed, screamed, begged for them to leave with me. They thought it was all a prank, laughed it off. But I knew the truth. The nuns weren't gone. They had never left. And now, neither could I. The last thing I remember before blacking out was their faces. Twisted, decayed, but full of hunger. That same nun, her black eyes locked onto mine, her voice calling to me, you're one of us now. When I woke up, it was morning. My friends were gone, and I was alone in the chapel. No sign of them anywhere, just a deep, overwhelming silence. I ran out, finding my way back to town. But things haven't been the same since. I can still see her. Out of the corner of my eye, in reflections, in the shadows at night. She's always there, waiting, watching. And I can still hear the whispers, faint but constant, growing louder with each passing day. I fear that one day, I'll join them, trapped in that abandoned convent for eternity, my soul consumed by the darkness. I only hope no one else dares to go looking for them. Because once you see them, once you hear them, they never let you go.